We're going to turn to Psalms chapter 37. We're going to look at the first six verses here. And some of this that I want you to think about when we're looking at this, I want you to think about our walk with God, our commitment to God, and, and how that is to be reflected in our actions. Verse 1 of Psalms 37, it says, Fret not yourselves because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. Now, one of the things that this verse is, is strongly telling us, and, and many times I forget this lesson, and it takes me a little while to drift away from God for him to slap me and bring me back into him. And this is the part where I drift away from God and, and he has to slap me. I allow sometimes the, the evildoers or, or the, the wrongdoers to distract me. And, and it says fret not. And to be honest with you, there's many times I will fret over evildoers or wrongdoers. And I will allow it to consume my mind, my thought, my energies. And over a period of time as that consumes me, it affects my prayer time, my devotion to God, and my walk. Because my mind and my desire is focusing on the evilness of those evildoers, a.k.a. the wrongdoers, and a.k.a. I'm fretting about it. And he plainly tells you and me in this verse, it says, fret not. Don't do that. And I'm going to be honest with you. I do it. And here's what happens in verse 2. It says, for they will soon fade like the grass withers like the green herb. One of the things it's telling, look, their time's coming. They're going to get it. And I promise you, the fretting I have allowed to happen in my mind and my heart, it never affected them. It never touched them. But over time, God got his punishment. God got his vengeance. And one of the things that he's saying here, if you will just allow me some time, I'll take care of it. Verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. He's saying, look, just give me some time. I'll take care of it. And he says right here in verse 3, Trust in the Lord. And do good. He said, look, quit fretting. Quit thinking that you're going to handle this. Trust me, I'm going to handle it. And he's saying, while you're allowing God to handle it, don't act like the evildoers. Don't act like the wrongdoers. Do good. Act right. He's saying right here, and he says, dwell in the land and befriend the faithfulness. He's saying, look, hang out with those that are going to encourage you. Hang out those that are going to give you a godly example. And he's saying, look, become close friends with them. Those in whom we hang around will affect our behavior. They will affect our language. They will reflect our character. They will affect it all, and it will reflect onto others. Verse 3, it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now think about that. If we're fretting over wrongdoers or evildoers, and we try to run ahead of God, and we're trying to take care of the situation, nothing really is going to happen. We're just going to really be more like them and less like God. But when we want to be like God is when we set back, we trust in Him, we wait on Him, and then He says in this verse, look, I'll give you the desire of your heart if you will just trust me. Now, some of you may have a desire in your heart to have a lot of money in your bank account, certain vehicles, certain home. And they may be things you want. You and I have to separate want from a desire, from a need. And God will meet those needs. And you say, well, how can I know that, that he's going to meet that need? In verse 5 it says, commit your way to the Lord Trust in him, and he will act. Now, you're not going to find that word act a whole lot in the Bible. But you and I need to catch this. It says if we commit to the ways of the Lord, meaning be like Christ, and we trust him, 
He's going to go into an action. There will be an action. Question, do you want to see God act in your life? Do you want to see him have action through you onto others or into the community? Well, right there it is. It says, he will act. Not you will act, not the, your spouse, not your pastor, but God will act. Verse 6 says, he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. He's saying, look, I will act in such a way your light, your righteousness will shine like a light. Now here's the thing. Think about a light shining. Now, for some of you, you've seen those blue lights in your rearview mirror before, and especially at night. And when they walk up to the, the side of the car, and I've been told this, I can't tell you I've experienced this, I've just been told this, that, that they shine this bright light in your eyes, and you see it. Now, I just understand, and I've just, you know, been, been told this. My wife has shared that experience with me. And, 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 but here's the thing, <coughs> is, is when, when that light shines, it blinds you. Now, think about it. If we allow God to act upon our, us, to act for our benefit, for our person, it is going to shine like a light of righteousness. And in the last part of that, it says, and your justice as noonday. Meaning, those people that are wrongdoers, evildoers, that have brought all that dysfunction into your life, however that is to look, he's saying, look, at noonday, the sun is at the brightest. It is the the." the brightest as the sun will shine upon everything. If you know that when at noonday the sun shines upon something and there is really no shadow to the right or left of a tree because it's directly beneath it. It limits the shadow. But what happens is justice is going to happen in such a way that it will be seen and not hidden from no one. So question. Are you willing to commit your ways to the Lord and trust him and allow him to act for your behalf? Let's pray. Father.